When it comes to the equipment of the U.S. ground forces, it is impossible not to mention the only Abrams main battle tank, which, over 40 years of operation, has become a true legend and symbol of Western tank building. M1 was created as a weapon to counter the possible offensive of the Soviet tank army, striving for the shores of the English Channel. However, for well-known reasons, the original mission was never completed, and the Middle East became the main battlefield. But the enemy remained the same Soviet-made tanks. In the early 60s, the United States came to the conclusion that it was necessary to create a new third-generation tank in order to replace the M60, which was gradually arranging for them. At the same time, on the other side of the ocean, the mighty Red Army, which conquered 40% of the Eurasian continent, revolutionized tank building. Rolled out the latest T-64, created by the Kharkov Design Bureau, the world's first main battle tank, with security and firepower comparable to a heavy vehicle, but at the same time demonstrating excellent speed characteristics at the level of a medium tank. At that time, the T-64 became the standard of a modern assault armored vehicle, which the whole world was equal to. The Americans were well aware that the Union received a significant advantage not only in numbers, but also in the technologies for the development of the tank industry. It was necessary to parry the answer immediately. To do this, the United States decided to call on the Federal Republic of Germany to join forces to combat the advancing threat. The result of the joint work of American and German specialists was realized in the MBT-70 project, which cannot be called a failure. Even despite the fact that the car never went into production, the engineers managed to implement many innovative solutions, hydraulic air suspension, changing the angle of the hull, combined armor of a new generation. Automatic gun controlled remotely. Mechanic the driver was located in the tower, which made it possible to make a low silhouette of the tank. The main gun had the ability to fire guided missiles. All of these innovations resulted in an incredibly high cost of $1.2 million. The Americans felt that this was too much of an investment and they would be able to independently create an alternative option for a smaller amount. Therefore, in the early 70s, the joint project was divided into two independent national programs. So, the German Leopard 2 was born, and in the USA they assembled the only prototype XM803, which, as a result, became not much cheaper than the previous version. The next attempts to rework the program did not make sense. It was easier to start everything from scratch, using the acquired knowledge and technology. In 1972, the Headquarters Commission provided the terms of reference for the new XM1 project. A long list of requirements can be stated in two sentences. The new American tank should dominate the battle with all existing and promising tanks of the USSR. The cost of such a car should not exceed $500,000. For major corporations responded by submitting their projects. In the 74th, the task force of the Ministry of Defense, after analyzing the proposals, signed a contract for the construction of prototypes with General Motors and Chrysler. The corporation had two years to assemble prototypes for comparative testing, with which its representatives successfully coped not only by meeting the deadlines for the implementation and implementation of all points of the TOR, but also by passing tests at the test site. Yet Chrysler emerged victorious, as the final cost of the tank was $10,000 less than that of General Motors. In 1980, the production of the first serial copies began. By that time, they had already received the official name M1 General Abrams, and a year later they were put into service. The tank was named after U.S. Army General Creighton Abrams Jr., a very famous figure in American military history. During World War II, with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, he commanded the 37th Armored Tank Regiment, which fought in Western Europe. The unit accounted for more than 300 units of destroyed German equipment, after which he led the operations of the American ground forces in the Vietnamese conflict and was the chief consultant on the XM-1 tank development program, Creighton Abrams. Died in 1974. At the age of 59 from lung cancer. 
taking into account the experience of working on the MBT-70 project and the amount of invested funds, the developers decided not to experiment with the layout and chose the classic version with a crew of four. The turret and hull of the M1 dictionary design with the installation of multi-layer armor in the frontal projection, created on the basis of the English Chapel. This was an atypical decision compared to the U.S. tanks of the post-war period. Thanks to the placement of the driver's mechanic in a semi-legal position of the upper armor, the whole plate was positioned at a large angle. On the base model, a rifled 105mm gun M68A-1, an American copy, the well-known British scheme, was initially installed. One ammunition load consisted of 55 shells, most of which were placed in compartments with service panels at the rear of the turret. A special armor partition separated the fighting compartment from the stowage, thereby protecting the crew in case of detonation of shells. Additional armament, two machine guns of caliber 7, 62, and 112 and 7 millimeters with a total supply of 11,300 rounds, six barreled smoke grenade launchers were mounted on both sides of the turret. Even at the design stage, it became clear that the mass of the tank would be significantly larger than its predecessors, and for high speed and acceleration dynamics, a powerful engine was needed in conjunction with an automatic hydromechanical transmission. Of the three available options for the power plant, the choice was made on gas turbine engines. HDT 1500 American Production There are several compelling reasons for this. First, it is smaller in size and weight. Secondly, not so loud compared to diesel. And thirdly, according to the developers, it has a modernization potential. That is, the power can be increased to 2,000 horsepower without any changes in the design itself. Of all the advantages, there are also disadvantages. High fuel consumption and high temperatures during operation. The undercarriage of the tank includes all road wheels and two supporting rollers on each side of the torsion bar suspension. As a result, Abrams received a maximum speed on the highway of 72 km per hour with a power reserve of 450, 500 km and with acceleration dynamics of 30 km per hour in 6 seconds. The fire control system on Abrams tanks is considered one of the best in the world. With the advent of new modifications, the tank is increasingly equipped with a variety of electronics, which helps the crew to detect a target at a great distance greater than the range of the main gun. This makes it possible to quickly identify the enemy, determine the distance, and make an aimed shot. Not having time to test a brand new tank in combat conditions. In 1982, the Americans learned about the appearance of a new projectile developed by the Soviet Union. What was the beginning of the launch of the Abrams modernization program? This is how the second basic version of the M1A1 appeared. And the main difference was the installed 120mm gun M256. Due to the increased caliber, the amount of ammunition was reduced to 44 shots. They introduced a complex of protection against weapons of mass destruction with a filter, ventilation devices. Later, they worked on increasing the security of the front of the tank by adding uranium-containing plates to the armor. For 10 years, Abrams has been conducting joint exercises with NATO allies in Western Europe, mainly in Germany. American tankers practiced their combat skills against the tank army of a potential enemy of the Soviet Empire, which ceased to exist in 1991. However, at the beginning of 1991, the Gulf War broke out. About 1850 pieces of Abrams were transferred to Saudi Arabia, where they had to fight with the T-55, T-62, and T-72 tanks, which are in service with the Iraqi army. Looking ahead, for M1 tanks, these were excellent conditions for a bright debut. Open desert terrain, a perfect fire control system, a well-trained crew and the enemy are obviously weaker not only in danger, but also in technological advantage. Iraqi tanks did not have night vision devices and modern rangefinders, and the maximum range of their guns was no more than 2 kilometers, which made it impossible for them to even get close to American vehicles. Abrams destroyed the enemy at a distance of over 2.5 kilometers.
After the Gulf War in 94, the next large-scale modernization of the M1A2 followed, which included an additional thermal imager and a circular observation device for the commander. An updated fire control system, a new stabilized gunner's sight, thermal imagers for the driver's mechanic. They made improved armor capable of withstanding modern projectiles, and also mounted special equipment for communicating with transitional units during hostilities. An additional improvement program for the M1A2, mainly aimed at integrating the most advanced combat electronic systems. Another interesting modification appeared after the analysis of urban battles during the Iraq War. Most often, American tanks were damaged by handheld anti-tank grenade launchers and improvised explosive devices. The movement of the tank along the narrow streets significantly reduced its maneuverability and visibility, which the Iraqi infantry successfully used, striking with RPGs in the stern and sides of the tank. Through a clear vulnerability about T. Abrams, they began to equip a special set of protection, which is aimed at increasing the combat capability of tanks in urban battles. The kit includes novelty, dynamic protection, additional armor panels are mounted on the bottom of the tank, on the roof of the tower near the loader's hatch, a machine gun M240 is installed remotely controlled. High Modernization Potential of Abrams At least another 20 years will be embodied in new versions. This is evidenced by the XM1A3 program launched in 2014, or Abrams II. Most likely, the total mass of the tank will be reduced to 55 tons, since the latest version already exceeds 63 tons. To do this, a new generation of lightweight armor will be developed. The crew will be reduced to three people. By installing machine guns, the tank will receive a new power plant and chassis. Of course, the changes will also affect the electronics of the vehicle, and the main gun will be able to fire guided munitions at a distance of more than 10 kilometers. While the program is under development, and more detailed information on it is not available, some sources claim that this will be another large-scale modernization of later versions, and not the development of a new generation tank. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel Top News Info.